or energy transport, okay? And I spent maybe today and a little bit on Friday talking about chapter 14. Chapter 14 will be the linkage between microscopic energy balance to the macroscopic energy balance. And macroscopic energy balance is what you did in perhaps principal calculation or in unit operation three, okay? And some of you asked about examination. There'll be three problems, just like what you did before. One problem would be chapter 10, which is shell balance. The other one would be chapter 11, which is equation of energy. The rest would be something mixed, something mixed together. Maybe um, conceptual question. Do you know conceptual question? Question that asks you for answer, not for calculation. Asks for knowledge. For example, what is heat transfer coefficient, for example. Okay, there'll be three problems. And for today, today I'm going to talk about uh, interface, interface transport for energy balance. And for the interface transport, again, normally interface problems are divided into two groups. The one is flow in conduit or flow in pipe. The other one is flow of fluid around some submerged object, okay? But for energy transport, mostly we will focus on the flow in conduit or flow in pipe. And the most common pipe would be circular pipe, okay? And this pipe usually in, in unit operation three, we will later adapt this kind of setup to be heat exchanger. For example, if you have cold fluid coming down into the pipe and you want to heat it up, you may have some other heating media like another hot fluid flowing on the outside of the pipe. Or you can have heating coil, let's say you put some electricity toward the coil to heat the surface of the pipe up. As a result, there will be heat transfer from outside the pipe into the fluid inside the pipe, okay? Suppose the fluid coming into the pipe has the uniform temperature Tb. In reality, temperature may not be uniform. Temperature within the cross-section area here may vary. On the surface, may be hotter than the fluid inside, all right? But we will find the average value. Remember, right now we are going to move from microscopic balance to macroscopic balance. In macroscopic balance, we will treat everything in the same cross-section area to be the same properties, same velocity, same temperature. This temperature, sometimes you say it is an average temperature, but we normally prefer the word bulk temperature, okay? Bulk temperature itself can be defined if you know temperature profile across this cross-section area, you can find bulk temperature by integrated, find the average velocity. However, average velocity for temperature is not the same as average velocity of the velocity. Early on, we find average velocity by integrating velocity at one particular um, position all over the place and divided by cross-section area itself, right? But here, since fluid in the center flow faster than the fluid at the surface, so velocity also pay, I, I mean play some roles for the finding our average velocity. So therefore, we will multiply velocity with the temperature at the local point and then take the average. That means this, this variable, this denominator, is basically you have velocity at one particular um, position, or sometimes you may call this one local velocity, multiplied by local temperature. Velocity itself is function of R in this case. Temperature is function of R and Z, 
right? You multiply them together and then integrate it across the surface area. So you integrate it with respect to R, integrate it with respect to theta. Okay? And then you divide it by velocity, the average velocity. This would get you the average of bulk temperature. Sometimes this one is called cup mixing. Temperature. And cup mixing temperature means suppose you have fluid flow through the pipe. At the end, if the fluid here flow downward into some container, and then you have a stir. This stir somehow mix the fluid together so that I mean temperature of the fluid will be uniform. This temperature should be equal to bulk temperature or TB. Okay? Now, suppose our fluid is heated up by some certain external heat source. Okay? If the temperature, outside temperature of the pipe is kept as T0. So every point here, you have temperature of T0. Right? And there will be driving force between T0 and T bulk for the heat transfer. So in this case, heat will be transferred into the system. All right? Now, within the pipe, you have conduction. In which direction? You should have conduction in R, right? You also should have conduction in Z, but sometimes it can be negligible. For Z direction, you will have convection, dominating convection in Z, Z direction, okay? So the fluid itself supposed to have both convection and conduction. And as you have experienced before, finding amount of heat flux relating to the problem like this involve very complicated temperature profile because of both convection and conduction would make because the, te the convection term itself makes the equation so complicated. All right? So sometimes it would be more convenient to simply use Newton's law of cooling. And earlier we have introduced Newton's law of cooling that heat transfer is equal to heat transfer coefficient multiplied by area multiplied by driving force delta T. This is Newton's law of cooling. During that time when I introduced this concept, I bring A here to divide from Q to get heat flux. Okay? Sometimes people write it down as small q equal to H delta T. Small q here is heat flux, the heat transfer per unit area. Capital Q is the amount of heat, is heat flow. Okay? Now, if you look into Newton's law of cooling, it can be used for the calculation of amount of heat transfer if you know the driving force. If you know temperature difference between two points and then you somehow find the heat transfer coefficient from the correlation. This correlation can be found from most of the chemical engineering handbook. Okay? And this correlation really depends on the system. If you have square tube, I mean, if you have circular tube, the equation that gives you heat transfer coefficient will be in one form. If you have square duct, the equation will be in another form. Okay? So in order to calculate heat transfer coefficient, you need to pick up the equation, the empirical equation, that is suitable for your system. All right? Once you pick that equation up from the handbook, you just can um, calculate 
rough estimate the heat transfer coefficient, plug it in here, multiply by driving force, then you can get amount of heat transfer easily. The detail about heat transfer coefficient here, you will learn further in unit operation three. All right? Now, the most important thing is delta T like this supposed to be difference between two temperatures, a temperature of two points. What are they? Normally, delta T here would be T minus T something minus T something, right? What are they? Where are they? If you consider heat transfer from the solid wall, suppose the solid wall has temperature T1. Suppose air outside has temperature T2. Okay? If T2 is lower than T1, there will be heat transfer. In which direction? From here to there, right? Amount of heat transfer Q here can be calculated from uh, Newton's law of cooling. Q would equal to H. Of course, H here, you must find equation describing heat transfer coefficient in the system like this. Once you find out the H value, you multiply by A, which is the interface area. And then delta T. Delta T in this case is supposed to be T1 minus T2. All right? So the driving force here is supposed to be in the direction of heat transfer. Now, if you go back to circular pipe like this, what would be delta T here? It's supposed to be temperature of the outer surface minus temperature of the fluid inside, right? That would be your delta T for heat transfer coefficient, uh, for heat transfer equation like this. However, in real system, in, in the industry, nobody measure temperature of fluid inside the pipe. We cannot install um, temperature measurement along the pipe, within the pipe. All we know is temperature of fluid going in. Or some, and sometimes temperature of fluid coming out. In between, we do not know, right? More than that, temperature of the fluid inside the pipe change with respect to position. If you heat it up and fluid coming in here is cold fluid, along the direction in, along Z direction here, temperature of the fluid is supposed to increase, right? Therefore, if you keep the temperature of the surface of the pipe constant to be T0, the driving force here will be lower and lower. Amount of heat transfer will be lower and lower as well. Okay? So if you calculate the amount of heat using Newton's law of cooling, and delta T here is delta T is a temperature outside subtracted by temperature inside, that amount of heat is calculated locally. Suppose you use temperature at this point subtracted by temperature at that point, this will be a driving force, right? The amount of heat transfer calculated would be the amount, it, it would be heat transfer locally here at this position. And if you repeat the process of calculation like this at every position, you see that Q locals really change upon position. Okay? So this is inconvenient. First, it changed with respect to position. Then the, the, the second problem is temperature here is something that we do not measure normally. So we, we would like to change the calculation to be the function of temperature inside, I mean input temperature and output temperature instead. Okay? 